Hey guys, it's Numistaka, and it's good to be back here again. Uh, I'm actually doing the dialogue audio bit for this video in Australia, over in Sydney, uh, where I've been attending a conference over the last few days, which may explain why I've been a little bit quieter than usual. This is part two of the uh, of the video on modern coins bought at the London Coins coin auction. And I just want to make it clear, guys, that London Coins is nothing whatsoever to do with the London Coin Company, because there is uh, another company that uh, is around lots and lots of listings on eBay and uh, a reputation which is kind of mixed, to say the least, uh, called the London Coin Company. And uh, London Coins is an absolutely different company in terms of ownership. Um, as I said in the last video, they don't seem to be incredibly invested in new technology, and that's an area I think they could improve. Uh, two videos ago, you saw the first part of this box arrive, and we can now focus on the delights that are in the second part. And we had a brief interlude at uh, the Palazzo Massimo in Rome, which uh, I attended accidentally on the way over to Australia for this conference. Thank you very much to all the people who commented on the last video. Um, somebody came up with a, a great idea about why these coin boxes seem to be uh, in silver foil and that it was maybe something to do with showing that there maybe the coins weren't in there or hiding the content through scanners. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether that's the case or why these auction coins should be covered in silver foil. Uh, still disappointing that uh, they don't contain uh, nice yummy cheese sandwiches, but then I'll have to live with that disappointment and instead start to discover a whole load of Britannias. And uh, at least my friend bought the special year Britannias. I think all of the Britannias he, he bought at auction were at least the ones with the special designs on. It seems that there is still a pretty good following for the ones with the special designs on. The ones with the regular designs seem to um, have a mixed kind of following, I guess, uh, in some way. It's just a bit of a kind of dull choice and a little bit closer to spot. Uh, whereas the ones with a special design actually I think are, are pretty nice and I also collect, uh, well I collect the one tenth of an ounce one for the uh, registry set over at NGC but uh, I also have one or two others of different denominations as well. So let's have a look at what's in this bag, this little box. We know that uh, it must be pretty much before 2011 because of the type of box. Uh, I think was it 2013 maybe they changed the boxes? And this one contains the um, Elizabeth anniversary five pound gold piece. And uh, seeing all these gold coins come in, in different shapes and sizes, I've been trying to work out what order I like them in and which ones, which ones I would score to be right at the top. And then which ones might be the also rans at the bottom and obviously the designs can be important but I still think in terms of modern British gold coin sovereigns are right at the top of the list you know of pretty much any size although I'm still not totally convinced about the tiny little quarter sovereigns but the five sovereign followed by maybe the one sovereign followed by the two sovereign followed by the half sovereign maybe followed by some of the special year Britannias, but possibly the five pound commemoratives kind of um, eclipse the Britannias in some way. Um, yeah, I think so. I think I would certainly put five pound, five pound commemoratives before Britannias. Uh, I think that they're very much on the up at the moment. I've seen a lot more interest from collectors in these big five pound gold pieces. They are expensive, that's the problem, that um, you know, they certainly are not pocket money uh, costs. Even one of these coins, you're looking at between 1,500 and 2,200 pounds. 
So uh, that's quite a lot of money. That's quite intense investment. But what a lot of people do is they start off with smaller coins, trade them in and trade them up for one or two of these bigger coins as well. Where will I go next on this um, sort order of desirability after the £5 gold pieces? I think it has to be the gold 50 pences at the moment. I think there's a lot of interest in gold 50 pences. Whenever you see them for sale, they sell very, very quickly. Lots and lots of interest. Um, obviously, you know, the older ones can be bought for a little bit closer to spot in online auctions. The newer ones are governed by the Royal Mint's uh, idea of what the premium is from time to time on new coins and also the desirability in terms of mintage. But um, I think after the £5 gold piece, pretty much comes the, f the 50p, the gold 50p. After the gold 50p, the big question is, is it generally the Britannia uh, or is it going to be the maybe the £2 gold commemorative. I think of all the commemoratives, the, the £2 is probably, in some ways, the least collected. People normally have a few of them, but maybe don't quite often collect all of them. I would probably put these Special Year Britannias slightly above the £2 commemorative, but I think you could argue it both ways. You know, you could certainly argue that the £2 commemorative should go above some of the Britannias uh, because the desirability of the Britannias, I think, is mostly about the special year designs and uh, that was a particularly nice one. What year was that? 2009. So, pretty recent one. So, Sovereign's probably at the top of the list of all different shapes and sizes, I think. Uh, interesting whether you guys agree with that. Then maybe the £5 commemorative coins, then the £5 gold 50p's, then the question is whether it is the Britannia's or the £2. Um, but where, where do the £1 coins fit in? I think the kind of £1 denomination actually is a bit of a sleeper. Um, and I've been quietly buying one or two of the gold one pound coins and in fact i did buy for my own collection uh, a one pound platinum coin which is very unusual uh, although platinum as a metal has been kind of a faded star recently compared to gold or compared to palladium um, there are really very very few of these platinum uh, commemoratives they made very, very few of them because of the VAT issue. Very difficult to sell with 20% extra VAT over the premium price. But you do see a few in the second-hand market occasionally, and they do fetch pretty good money, and they're a kind of little bit of an outsider. I don't know where they fit in. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think maybe the uh, things like the round gold round one pound or the Nations of the Crown... 12-sided gold pound uh, or the one I bought was a platinum Nations of the Crown 2017 where they only minted 250 of the platinum coins against maybe 2,000 of the gold coins so uh, and I bought the platinum and the gold coin uh, I quite like the chunkiness of that one pound I think in many ways I would put the one pound above the general two pound commemoratives but um, who knows who knows what order you guys would want to put those coins into for the best quality gold and silver coins it's the coinconnection.co.uk with two percent discount code ben all september and I, i'm not saying that the two pound format is a bad format you know, you've got pretty much half an ounce of gold in each of those coins, so that can't be bad. A lot of the designs are really, uh, really nice, elegant designs. Some of the most interesting designs are on this format. But I think in some ways, the two-pound format or the two-sovereign format has always been the one that people have kind of missed out on in some ways. 
I mean, you can see here, this is this is one that, uh, you know, you can see with the brochure, this is celebrating the anniversary of the, uh, the guinea. And it's a really nice coin. You know, it's a nice um, commemorative coin. It's attractive. It's historical. Uh, I've seen a lot of interest in these coins in cupro, nickel and silver on the web. They change hands on eBay all the time. Lots of sales of these. Very few sales of the gold one because there were very few gold ones around. And this is the first one that I've seen in all the thousands of coins that uh, have been graded. So uh, there may not very well not have sold a huge amount of these. It'd be interesting to check with the Royal Mint website on the actual sales of these coins. You know, the, the general mintage was pretty high, but it doesn't mean to say they actually sold them all. Um, or maybe they just kind of people like them and they're just keeping them and not selling them. So uh, I haven't seen so many come through. So the last one that I've got in this video today, and I guess in a way I purposefully saved the best to last, is um, one of the gold year sets. This is the first gold year set that I've had the pleasure of uh, showing on the channel. Um, it's one I always wanted to show on the channel, but these things are so damn expensive that, you know, you really very rarely get to see them uh, at all. Uh, they're normally kind of bought and then they're locked away and you know, they never see the light of day or you see them at the odd auction. This is the 2017 year set. When these come out from the Royal Mint, they're normally, I think there were 175 of this particular year set made. And uh, they, their cost at the Royal Mint when it came out was, was it, it's either 5,500 or 5,750, something like that. Um, and it sold out really, really quickly. Um, I'm not sure if these things sell out because there's so many collectors who immediately want to buy them. But there's quite a few coin dealers who specialise all over the world in modern coins. You know, and probably half of the mintage of 175 was taken up by one, one or two per dealer who buy them for stock or to put on display. Um, it may not be entirely end users buying these things immediately, but eventually they all go into the hands of end users rather than dealers. But one of the things the Royal Mint do very well is the presentation of these types of sets. They certainly have a very special feel when you unbox them. You know, it comes with one of these kind of protectors, a little bit like a, an expensive handbag, um, you know, <laughs> some kind of dust jacket. Uh, well, this one seemed a bit, a bit of a kind of tight fit, but uh, I guess that's that's fine. That's what you want, and it protects the the boxes. Um, and they do the boxes really well, don't they? I mean, it's kind of it's real wood. <laughs> it's all highly polished. It's an expensive thing to make. And let's take a look at the stuff that comes with it. So we've got the COA, the Certificate of Authenticity. It says that in 2017 there were 100 of these box sets made. I think uh, in 2018 there were slightly more. Um, I think that was the one that had the special George V birthday coin in it. Shows the five coins that are in there and the mintages. The one that has the lowest mintage really, the rarest of these coins, is the Canute five pound gold piece. So a hundred were in this set and there were only about 375 odd minted so there are very few of them in the uh, in, in the Canute box set on their own as well so those are one to watch out for. They're certainly changing hands at quite high prices on their own over the uh, the regular five pound gold pieces that you might expect. There's the one pound gold piece that I was talking about before, the Nations of the Crown. Then you've got the history of the, uh, the House of Windsor. Uh, I think that wasn't a particularly amazing design. I do like the Canute uh, design. I think that's really, really nice. And then after the Jane Austen one, you've got the uh, also a nice design, which is kind of about the war 
the war fought in the air. And then uh, that 50p, the 50p with uh, Isaac Newton, which is another really, really nice 50p design. So I don't know which ones are your favourites on that, but um, you know, most people, I guess, will never see one of these year sets. Um, there's probably not that many of them ever held really in um, collectors' hands. But it's a pretty cool set. I'm not sure when these sets come out every year. Do they come out before? Do they come out before all the other all the other um, individual ones? So you get to have the coins that are coming out before they are issued, or are these only out at the end of the year when all the others are already issued? Um, anyone who knows the answer to that, let me know, because I'm I'm never particularly aware about when these come out during the calendar from the Royal Mint. Let's take a little bit uh, of a quick look at the coins. I really do think it's a pretty striking design. I like that very much. Typically that coin alone is probably going to be, in dollar terms, um, 2006 to 2800 dollars. The gold, this this one, all, all a lot of these mo more modern gold fifty pences are holding their value pretty well. That one is probably a nine hundred pound coin, maybe a little bit higher now. The Windsor one, I think probably the Windsor one would be worth maybe a little bit less than the Canute one. They produce more of them, and the design isn't quite as striking. And then there's the one with the aeroplane on with the, uh, is that a biplane? First World War, the war in the air, and it's a pretty cool design. And then the Jane Austen one. I've graded quite a few of those Jane Austen ones, and uh, so far I think only, it may be just one, maybe two have made it to a 70 grade. But a lot of those get graded as 69s for some reason. So maybe they find one or two little flecks on them and uh, grade them down a little bit. But I have had one, at least one 70, out of quite a few coins. So that brings us to the end of the London Coins auction wins. But I'd be really interested in knowing what you guys think about the, the pecking order of uh, British gold modern coins. Uh, which ones you prefer and which ones are also rounds.